Meaning overall that dt over 2 pa, we can divide both sides by 2 pa is not equal to 0 because pa is equal to 3, meaning 6 is not equal to 0 because success of pa, so we can divide both sides by 2 pa. Okay, just keep this in mind. A huge thanks to my Patreon supporters for making this episode possible. Little PSA before we get into the main video. This week on STEM Week, oh, on STEMmerch.com, we have the STEM Lab merch reduced the whole collection by 7%. So if you want to show the world that you're a proud STEM major just like your dad, then make sure to check out the STEM Lab merch and maybe get yourself one. Now we are going to dive right in. So um, we are going to derive in a chill little session an integrator which comes from the deepest deepest depths of hell possible. This one right here, it looks extremely innocent and looks like you can turn stuff nicely into tater series and entertain stuff, but ah, ain't working so nicely. If you want to solve this in an elementary way, you are going to have a bad time. But we are going to use something that we have derived before in a monster slaying episode. You can find a link down there at the top of the description to the corresponding video. And this is going to make our lives way easier. You know how much work we have invested in solving the last thing, okay? And you uh, might have an idea how hard it's going to be to solve a special case of it. <laughs> it's not too easy. So before we get into the main thing, I would like to take a look at a kind of different integral that we can manipulate into what we have here. So at first I would like to take a look in, uh, at the integral from zero to infinity of the inverse tangent of x over z divided by e to the 2 power x minus 1 integrate with respect to x. And you might notice a few similarities. So at first we have an inverse tangent over some exponential function in some way. Fingers on the exponential function we have a different argument here. Here's x. This is where we want to go and here we have 2 power x. So we can't need to get rid of the 2 power that we're having here. But also in the inverse tangent we are going to have um, in, instead of x we are going to have x over z. So this right here is a parameterized integral in a variable set. So we also need to plug in a value for z later. But at first let us get rid of this problem right here with the 2 power x. Naturally, we are going to make a substitution. To get from this thing, multiplication of a constant and a variable, to just a variable in itself, we are going to introduce a substitution, let 2 pi x be equal to t, for example. Meaning overall that dt over 2 pi, we can divide both sides by 2 pi, it's not equal to 0 because pi is equal to 3, meaning 6 is not equal to 0 because success of pi, so we can divide both sides by 2 pi. Okay, just keep this in mind. Being equal to dx. Man, that was Eminem style, that was math Eminem. No, I, I can't speak as well and as fast, but that was kind of okay, okay, math rap. <laughs> For fuck's sake. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Just stupid. Now we are going to plug our new definitions into here. I want you guys to notice that dt, uh, that, that t, not dt, that t is nothing but uh, 2 pi x, meaning our role since we can divide both sides by this constant right here, x is nothing but t over 2 pi. I'm, I'm so confused now after doing my, my rapping here. Me rapping. <laughs> we are going to get an integral from. Okay, on the one hand, what's with our up and lower bounds? If we were to plug 0 into here, it's going to stay at 0. 0 times something is just 0. If we let x go to infinity, 2 pi is positive, meaning our upper bound also goes to infinity. We are going to be left with the inverse tangent of... Okay, x is going to turn into t over 2 pi. Meaning our role here in the inverse tangent argument, we are going to have t over 2 pi z. Divided by, obviously, now we are going to have e to the t power. Minus 1 integrated with respect to t, but we're going to have a factor of 1 over 2 pi that we can bring to the front using the linearity of the integral. Okay, so we're having this right now. This thing is actually really similar to what we have here, with the only difference being that we are going to have a factor of 1 over 2 pi in the front. Doesn't matter, we can get rid of it later by multiplying both sides by it. And also, we are having this weird inverse tangent argument. How can we get from t over 2 pi z to just t or x? Really doesn't matter, it's just a dummy variable. Well, obviously, by setting z equal to 1 over 2 pi to the multiplicative inverse, because 2 pi over 2 pi is going to turn into 1, and this is going to get the job done. So, for z being equal to 1 over 2 pi, we are going to get that this integral right here is going to turn into 1 over 2 pi, times the integral from 0 to infinity of the inverse tangent of t over e to the t minus 1 dt. And this is exactly 1 over 2 pi times the integral that we are seeking. 
Okay, this is as far as we got for now. Now we, I would like to make use of the result that we have derived before in the monster slaying episode, namely Binet's, Binet's second formula for log gamma. Um, I'm, I'm going to write it out, it doesn't take long, it's, it's really a very, a very uh, small formula, it doesn't involve too many factors, it's really extremely easy to remember. I don't know how anyone could not remember this easy to remember formula. Um, there's really nothing you could not not remember about this formula. <laughs> okay, we are nearly done, we are nearly done. Like I said before, it's a very easy to remember formula. Doesn't take too long. And that's where now. This right here is Binet's second formula for log gamma. Okay, it has log gamma in it and this is what it's going to yield. And you might notice why I have approached this integral using this one right here. Just because, this is exactly this one right here, okay? I hope you can see the similarities. This integral is exactly this one. And now we are going to make use of our manipulations that we did here and just plug the new value into here. Also under the condition that we are going to let z be equal to one over two pi, which we are going to plug into each and everything right here. Let us plug one over two pi into each and every z, meaning overall we are going to get one over two pi r out on the other side on the right hand side right here. Meaning overall, we are going to be left for now with the logarithm of gamma of one over two pi. And if you want to solve this integral right here elementary, I have no idea how the frick you are going to get to this factor right here, probably using the di gamma function some way. It's absolutely horrible. It's seriously horrible solving this in an, in an elementary fashion. Next we are going to get the logarithm of one over two pi. We are going to manipulate this further in a second. Times one over two pi minus one half, minus one over two pi, plus, okay, logarithm of square root something is one half times the logarithm of the rest of the argument. So one half times the logarithm of two pi. Okay, I'm going to rewrite it just because of what we have here. It's going to be important in a second. And after all, we are going to get plus two times, and like I said, if we plug in the initial conditions, so z being equal to one over two pi, we are going to get that this is one over two pi, times r. 1 over 2 pi times r. Okay, our integral i is now involved in this huge result. We can simplify it a bit more and solve everything for i. Also you might notice that 2 and 1 half is going to cancel out to just 1 over pi. Now we are going to simplify stuff a bit further. I mean if we have log to the 1 over 2 pi, this is nothing but log to the uh, log of 2 pi to the negative 1 pi, we can bring negative 1 to the front, leaving us with negative log of 2 pi. Also, you might notice that if we were to factor everything out right here, this is going to turn into 1 half times the logarithm of 2 pi minus 1 over 2 pi times the logarithm of 2 pi. And that's a really good thing because we have 1 half this thing plus 1 half the same thing is going to give us just the thing in itself, okay? 1 times the thing in itself. Meaning overall, actually, everything's going to simplify right now to the logarithm of gamma of 1 over 2 pi. There's nothing really you can simplify about this. I, I believe uh, re reflection formulas really don't help here, I suppose. It would be cool if you could simplify it further, but I do not think that there's a way actually is hence equal to. Okay, this right here is going to turn into the log of simply 2 pi. Next up, we are going to get negative 1 over 2 pi log of 2 pi and then negative 1 over 2 pi, we got rid of this part, plus 1 over pi times r. Okay, and now we are basically done. What we are going to do now is we are going to solve for our i, meaning at first we are going to multiply both sides by pi because it's not equal to 0 because it's equal to 3, meaning this and that is going to cancel out. We are going to get rid of this pi, this pi, we are going to multiply this by pi and this by pi. And now we are going to add those two summons on both sides. We are going to subtract pi times log of 2 pi on both sides and then we got the value for our integral i. Meaning our terrible integral i sends nothing but pi times the log of gamma of 1 over 2 pi. And then minus pi times log of 2 pi. And then we are going to get um, minus, no po positive, I'm terribly sorry, 1 half log of 2 pi and then plus one half. Obviously you can um, 
bring some stuff together if you wish. You can either factor out, uh, factor out the log of two pi here or you can factor out the one half here. Really doesn't matter what you do, but I'm going to leave it how it is for now, just because um, this right here is already what you're going to get. Um, actually, Wolfram Alpha can find the antiderivative or just the antiderivative with the initial conditions plugged in um, of this integral. It can just give you an approximation as far as I'm concerned. And I checked if my solution was correct um, by just calculating numerically what this is going to yield and then just calculating what this is here. And this is the answer as it seems um, up to approximation errors. Um, other than that, it's obvious that this um, is going to hold if you plug in 1 over 2 pi because Binet's second formula for log gamma is going to be convergent for the real part of z being greater than 0, strictly greater than 0. And since 1 over 2 pi is, I don't know, 1, 1, 6, um, it's going to be strictly greater than zero. So it's in the radius of convergence and this is good. Other than that, I found out this result by just plugging in the values um, that I got here. Um, I was trying around with a few values for Z such that I get some very nice results out on the other side. This is one of the very nice results that comes straight from hell. But this thing also has a little brother, which is even worse to derive if you want to do it elementary. I don't know why it's so much more difficult, but it's, it's nearly impossible if you don't use um, Binet's formula. So the one I'm talking about is when we plug in z being equal to 1. This is a very nice thing because um, if we plug in z being equal to 1, we are going to get gamma of 1, which is 0 factorial, which is 1. Log of 1 is going to be 0. This is going to die in a corner. Log of 1 is also going to die in a corner. So this and this is going to vanish. And we are just going to be left with negative 1 plus log of this chunk plus two times some integral that we are going to get out. Let me write it out very quick. This is a very nice result that I also want to mention here. Meaning if we were to plug um, z being equal to 1 into Binet's second formula, we are going to get that 0 is nothing but negative 1 plus the log of square root of 2 pi plus 2 times the integral from 0 to infinity of the inverse tangent of x over z is going to turn into x over 1, which is nothing but x over e to the 2 pi x minus 1 dx. Meaning overall, if this right here is some other integral j, I don't know, then our integral j is going to be equal to, we are going to divide both sides by 2 overall, leaving us overall with, um, let me see for a second, have I, no, should be right. Um, if we were to divide both sides by 2, we are going to get overall that um, 1 half minus 1 half times the log or square root of 2 pi, it's nothing but the value of j. Yeah, this is just something I also wanted to mention. If you want to do those elementary, you can try it out for yourself. Um, it, it really doesn't work out. Um, I have tried a lot around using Laplace transforms, etc. Thing is, um, you can kind of turn this into ge geometric series. Also, the inverse tension has a very nice McLaurin series expansion. But no matter what you do, you're going to get a double series over an integral out. It just doesn't work out. Couldn't find a very nice way to, to compute this other than using Binet's formula. Yeah, this was just a little complimentary video. I want wanted to do just because it's a very nice topic and I really like it. Other than that, I'm thinking about creating a video where I talk about those generalized integrals of this form just with a parameter a or t or whatever the frick in there. Um, maybe I'm going to do this next time around. Um, it's just a class of integral I want to cover and it's basically just manipulating this formula up here yet again. If you enjoyed this video and empty sign, subscribe, make a comment, channel, like. Don't forget to check out Flamble Maps too. Uh, we, we got some very nice calculus content coming out over there. Other than that, um, STEM week going on over on stemmatch.com. Also, we have engineering clock, fractals, etc. Other than the next video, I wish you guys a Flamble day. Ciao! <laughs>